I grew up in a family where being a lawyer meant service. That's what it meant. But I also realized fairly soon after becoming a lawyer that I had to kind of learn that lesson for myself. I learned it, like probably most of us, a hard way. I left Harvard Law School ready to change the world, thinking I was the smartest lawyer in the world, thinking I knew everything. Went out to the Navajo Indian Reservation, Chinle, Arizona, at Canyon de Chez, if any of you know that area. Uh, and a, 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 a traditional Navajo walked in my office, Little Red House. And Little Red House spoke only Navajo. He had bought a pickup in uh, Blanding, Utah. It had been a terrible uh, vehicle. He needed help. And I looked at his credit contract, and it violated every truth and lending law in the world, and I was on the case. Not only for Little Red House, I brought a class action against that car dealer in Blanding, Utah, for everybody who had ever bought a car in Blanding, Utah. The case went up to the Court of Appeals. I, within my first year out of law school, I was in front of the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals in Denver. You can look this up, Federal Reporter, Second Series. Then it went up to the, uh, <laughs> then, it, then they ruled, made a ridiculous ruling. It went on bonk to the Tenth Circuit. I came back and argued to the full Tenth Circuit. This was like, I was, everything I had thought about myself was coming true. I was changing the world. <laughs> And so one day, we're sitting, I was sitting in my little office in Chinle, little Arizona, and Little Red House came in, and we always had to talk to an interpreter, and he said, when am I going to get a pickup truck? <laughs> and I realized how badly I had served this client. <laughs> what he wanted was a pickup truck, and I had the biggest test case going to the United States Supreme Court, and I had a dealer in Blanding that would give him 10 pickup trucks if he would just uh, leave at this point. And I'll say, it was a humbling, humbling experience about what service is about. It wasn't about what I wanted. It wasn't about what I was thinking. It was about making sure that I was listening to who I was supposed to help. And then I was figuring out what that person wanted and needed and under the law was entitled to. And my job as a lawyer was not to go out and become the greatest lawyer in the world, my job as a lawyer was to make sure that Little Red House got his pickup truck. I want to thank the State Bar Foundation for giving me the Charles Goldberg Award. I never thought I could get out of law school. <laughs> and end up with tremendous, tremendous honor, and I thank all of you. The State Bar has had a proud 139-year history of making Wisconsin's legal system the standard bearer of our country. The State Bar of Wisconsin and its 24,000 members has proved relentless in its mission of justice. What shouldn't be ignored is the tremendous public services of all these governors and all of you who are on the Bar Foundation, including what you do for attorney referrals, public education, reduced fee legal assistance, low-income state residents, as Charles Goldberg would really appreciate. And perhaps then, Chief Justice Edward Ryan said it best. In January of 1878, during the early formation of the State Bar, he spoke with great passion of the obligation of the legal profession, the peaceful social order, the integrity of the state, and every sacred personal right are in the keeping of our profession as lawyers. All of us as lawyers have an obligation to serve an obligation that all of us in this room admire very seriously and embrace. As I am standing here today, I am reminded that six out of our last 10 governors earned law degrees. And going back even further, 10 of our last 20 governors, dating back to Governor John J. Blaine in 19, 1921, had law degrees. And perhaps the fact that the voters of our great state are so frequently willing to place their trust in lawyers with such great frequency as a tribute to the tireless efforts of the state bar and the practice of law in our great state. It was great service, and you know, one of the wonderful things about it, and I look out here at Tommy, Judge Prosser, uh, the folks of both political persuasions, and think how fortunate we've been in Wisconsin where politics isn't a blood sport. 
All of us have served with one another. We've uh, occasionally crossed swords and sometimes even a harsh word or two. But by and large, it is a wonderful experience and it's a shame uh, that more people involved in the political process don't have the same advantages and the same opportunities we've had. Uh, but we ought to understand, I think, that it isn't automatic. God didn't just smile at us. We ought not take it for granted. We ought to celebrate it. We ought to do everything we can to encourage it. And I think honoring people who come from uh, different persuasions and who have uh, demonstrated that politics needn't be a combat, but can really be an exchange of ideas, moving us forward in different directions, perhaps, or by different methods, perhaps, but in the same direction, uh, is a pretty good thing. And we ought to be very, very proud of it. When I was running for governor and I gave a talk in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and I finished the campaign talk, and after I was finished, an elderly gentleman came up to me, and he looked at me and says, Governor, he said, that had to be the world's most god-awful speech I've ever heard in my whole life. Well, his wife had heard that and was very nervous, so she rushed up to me. Oh, she said, Governor, she said, please excuse my husband. He's old and he's senile, and all he does is repeat whatever he hears everybody else say. <laughs> you should know that between Governor Schreiber, Earl, Thompson, and Doyle, we have a combination average of seven years in public service. Now, did I hang on to the job for four years? and 14 years and eight years, no. I gave it up after two years so these gentlemen could follow me and also have an opportunity to participate in the government. I seldom get credit for that. 